And here we go. <laughs> What's up, everybody? This is The Quad with Chris Young. As always, I am Chris. We have Haley the Bear. Activate bear mode next week. (laughs) (laughs) One week away from bear mode. Producer Josh. We are so back. We are so back. (laughs) (laughs) And last but not least, finally back on the podcast, Ryan from Miami. Uh, Do I look? I look tan. I had a nice little vacation, a little time off. I missed you guys, man. I missed you guys. Good to be back. Good to be back. I I have not had time off yet, so I I will be right where you are in about three to four weeks. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, by the way, today t- today marks the last day I get to have the championship belt for fantasy football, so I'm going to enjoy it all day long. Yes, you you should actually take photos of you wearing it just over your shoulder, casually going will, to work. I will Venmo you ten dollars to wear it live on TV. Oh, <laughs> I will I will I will do it. I will I will Venmo you ten dollars, but we need, will, we need proof of it. I will give I you a hundred dollars to wear it live on TV if you do it. <sighs> okay, but here's the problem. The nope. belt is in Nashville, and I'm in Florida. That is the oh, best thing. Ryan, issue that is. you must wow, keep. Wow, you failed. Got to keep that thing on. That's right now. Come on, come on. <laughs> you missed out on a payday, my I'll friend. I'll travel with it at all times now. I will travel with it at all times. Now. <laughs> well, no, well no, you're about no, you to lose won't. your chance. <laughs> you're not going to travel with it at all. In fact, you're going to. I will be traveling with it. Bringing it from times. your apartment to Chris, and that's it. I'm going to wear it on stage. Hell yeah, you are. All right, so the you should poll, have like you should have like the Undertaker music hit <laughs> through bang, the PA, and then you just yeah. throw it out, you know, just the bell. I do already have the poll up. Okay, <laughs> yeah, we we've done things differently without you, Ryan. <laughs> oh, I yeah. see. I've been easily replaced. Yep. Well, I already have it pulled up. We don't have the filler buster for it. Um, filler so- buster. buster? <laughs> it's filibuster. Filla filler, whatever. <laughs> Same thing. Filling a spot. Hey. Anyways, um, <laughs> last last week's poll was the best restaurant chain that no longer exists. This is the first time that we've had a lot of comments with people saying, I have no idea what any of those restaurants are. Which, what? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that's possible. That's because they don't exist anymore. <laughs> I guess, There's but, also that. There I feel, is also yes, that. Yes, but I feel like our demographic, our, our demographic, our people our age. So evidently not. Yeah. So anyways, <laughs> with 40, it was, it was decently close between two of them with 45% Chi Chi's is. Oh, that was me. The winner. Yeah. yeah. And then with 37 Ryan's with 18 Don Pablo's. Just not enough people knew Don Pablo's. Uh, yeah. I, I just feel like that was there. There weren't enough Don Pablo's. It's like, it's like the know. people that know Taco John's and Taco Then they, Mia. then they no know. One knew. Yeah. Yeah. No one went with Kenny Rogers. Like Kenny Rogers is, was, was oh, pretty, dude, pretty well yeah, the Kenny Rogers roasters. Stop so it! No, that's way, way before our time. Spoken like someone who just Googled it right now to see the first <laughs> thing that popped up. Yeah, exactly. Yep, that's he, did. I saw, he I saw, did. I saw that article too, Ryan. It's okay. Yeah, I, I can tell by the look on Ryan's face that that's what he did. Because uh, if you guys are not watching, by the way, definitely go check right. us out. On Ryan, w- Ryan, where can they find yeah, us on where, YouTube? Where can they find us, Ryan? Oh, it's really easy. So you go to youtube.com, uh, right? And uh, and if you search the quad with Chris Young, uh, we'll pop up there. I also believe it's youtube.com slash at the quad with CY. And if you do that, it is that. as it you up. are as you are typing it in. You, test, know you know what? You know what's really sure. cool? If you guys are watching on YouTube, uh, what you're going to see and we'll also like steal a clip of this. Monsell has uh, done a new video setup. And it runs it across the screen while we were actually talking about that. That's so incredible. That's pretty cool. Wait, I wait, you can it. do that? Yeah, he can do a lot of stuff. What do you mean runs across the, the screen? Like, look, like the scrolling right bar. Look. <laughs> the future is now. He's oh, amazing. Like do we have Do we have smoke machines? Like, what else do we have? What we can cool get stuff? smoke I, machines in I, here. I, we can have cryo. We I, can do it. I literally do have a fog machine, so. <laughs> <laughs> We've thrown a lot of Club parties. Quad. 
Okay. So, uh, yeah, let's go to music. Music. This, this changes everything. We have to think, oh, yeah. think oh, by about the way, how we it, do this there's, now. There's a thing that pops up that says music and is like a little... How? What? Yeah, man. He's that good. Bro. Dang. We're getting fancy, MVP. guys. MVP. MVP. <laughs> MVP. MVP. We, we're four years in the making, but we're always growing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. So... Talking about music, I do have to address this week. I just got off the phone on the way in to do the podcast with my buddy Josh Phillips, who wrote the number one song this week by himself. Uh, by himself, a hundred percenter, uh, dirt cheap for Cody Johnson, the and number one song in the country. The number one song in the country. Very, very proud of him, Josh Phillips. You're the man. Love you, bro. Um, very happy to see him have that success and uh, to see that ring the bell and get to the top of the chart. And with a song that's so personal to his story. I mean, it's quite literally about him and Jordan and their house. Yeah. And, and uh, their little pink girl or pink girl. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> their little girl with her bow. So yes. John just turns you yellow. What is what is that one? <laughs> Filler buster. Filler buster. Too much cotton candy, I suppose. <laughs> oh, I want Y'all some remember candy. right before uh, COVID when, <laughs> no. when Haley was at a, a Predators game? It was game me and Josh, actually. Yeah, with you, and yeah. she was sharing her cotton candy with everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we were just. Sharing is no one would do that now. We were, no we, one would do that. She was That's, literally pulling pieces it off and then sending it down the line to someone else to eat. So every person along the way touched it and then it was, ate it. It was, just like, it was just like the beer snake, but different. Yeah. What's less sanitary? I'm not sure. I don't know. I, honestly, Ryan, you you make a great point. I I have no clue which one of the two is is the least sanitary at least I'll when you're here. doing the beer snake like the, the the cotton candy melts in your fingers as you're passing it around I, yeah Ooh. there's alcohol it's probably killing some germs it's, it's killing yeah. brain cells, brain cells what, too um yeah. Don't god, ruin I forgot, people's god i forgot fun. about that that's so gross uh, <laughs> y'all did it I, I y'all did it. it i didn't eat i didn't eat it i ate the cotton candy <laughs> you, were, you but came I was, in talking about it i said that she was the one that did it i didn't say i was eating you it. let her do the it people that, yeah. the you pe- were the responsible adult <laughs> that's fair the people that ate it are gross i had the cotton i had the fresh cotton candy the people that ate it had the touchy cotton candy Ugh, oh god. the touchy oh is it possible that Haley created COVID 19 we <laughs> Can we, roll, can we roll that out? No. No, we cannot roll that Fall of 19, out. Wuhan was December of 19. I don't know. Mm, Just... Shaky. Shaky at best. A lot of... Was it succulent and savory? Uh, <laughs> there's nothing savory about spun sugar, I don't I think. St- Unless it's off of someone else's fingers. <laughs> oh, God. Why? No. Well, then we were talking about music. Okay, yeah, music. Back to music. Um, Fairs and festivals, it counts. Yeah. It had a a really, really awesome show in New Mexico. Uh, Shout out to everybody there. Also, big shout out to uh, the casino. Uh, 1-800-BETS-OFF is the national Mm. gambling hotline. Mm. If you have a gambling problem, please do not gamble. Go get help. Uh, I did not have a problem this weekend. I, <laughs> I took I took more money than I was supposed to home with me. No help. I, <laughs> <laughs> did it yourself. I I <laughs> um I did take photos with like the the staff because I went in at night. We got in like how much money do you have to win in order for them to pose with well, you? Well, I, no. I, <laughs> They they recognized me when I came in in the middle of the night, and I was the only one on the bus that was awake. And so I was like, oh, it's, I might as well go in now because, you know, it's 24 hours at a casino. And sure. I was like, I, I don't I don't really want to go tomorrow. I'm going to go to the gym tomorrow, and then I've got the show and sound check and all that stuff. So uh, I went in, and they kept having to walk over, and, like, the people that were paying me out were like, can we have a photo? And I was like, Sure. <laughs> So um, big, big shout out to them and everybody that came out to the show because it was actually like cold. I didn't expect New Mexico to be like that cool mm-hmm. this time of year. It was like 58 when you were singing. Uh, yeah, it was very uh, surprisingly chilly. Um, yep. 
Didn't sweat at all. It sounds lovely and wonderful. I'm I'm jealous. It sounds beautiful. Yeah. It's it's still 100 degrees here, Ryan. Don't worry. Did I say on the podcast when we played in Albuquerque, uh, Coach Mike Brown was at the show? Uh, no, you didn't, which is amazing. Also, why are your eyebrows twitching? Do you feel that? No. As you're looking at me, it's like they're like twitching while you're <laughs> not like that. <laughs> <coughs> not uh, like the sexy eyebrow raise. No, no, and definitely not whatever Ryan's doing. I don't think. <laughs> I'm going to no. consider every facial move I make for the rest <laughs> of my <laughs> life now. Sorry. Uh, so Mike Brown showed up. Yeah, he was. A, he's a huge Sam fan. And we were it was post show. I'd already showered and I was like walking to the bus. You, wait, you don't shower pre-show? No. <laughs> okay. Oh, God, no. Oh, God, no. Do you know how sweaty I get during loadout? <laughs> no way. <sighs> I mean, I'm... I'm so clean. if you run into Josh at a Sam Hunt show, yeah, just know just, that he is not showered. I shower afterwards, so I'm nice and clean for the for the bedtime. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I was, <laughs> was walking out to the bus. It's really... A big group of people came walking, really tall dude, and I was like looking at him like, man, he looks really... Brown. Why would Mike Brown be in Albuquerque? That doesn't make any sense. And I just keep looking like at the him. wide receiver, Mike Brown. No, like the coach of the Sacramento Kings, Mike Brown. Oh, that, that Mike Brown that coached, mm -hmm. coached LeBron and Kobe and all sorts of people. Mm -hmm. um, he coached Mike too. He was an assistant on the Wizards. Um, yeah, just it all clicked for me. And he was already casual Mike Brown. So he was already too far gone. Then Tyrone comes. He's like, man, I just got done talking to Mike Brown. I was like, where was the text dog? Like, where was the, Hey, Josh might really want to have, of all the, people, have you. this conversation. This would be on yeah. par with like you being like, Oh, I didn't know you were up the street. I was just hanging out with Tom Hanks and uh, I didn't even think to call you. You know what I mean? It'd be like that kind of betrayal. I, I, I got another one that's going to make you. <laughs> Do you uh, want to say who he coaches for? So people who. He, he already did. Yeah, the Sacramento, Sacramento Kings. Oh, I missed that. Yeah. My bad. He said the Light Kings. the beam, light the beam, light, light the, the beam. beam. Um, I got one that might make you jealous that's upcoming. Mm. Uh, I, have a, I have a sit down, like, meeting, hang possible co-write stuff with diane warren oh <laughs> if you don't know who diane warren is i just yeah i okay <clears throat> i need to bring a up quick google search yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this will, is one will of, lead you down a rabbit hole of this like, is one of the most holy crap prolific songwriters <laughs> ever <laughs> ever you can't even look up diane Warren songs because there's too it, many. It's alphabetically listed. I yeah. did this the other day. Um, I mean, because you loved me by Celine Dion. Oh, um, <laughs> it's, it's so hard to find all yeah, of them. I know. Oh gosh. Uh, it, it, dude, it, you're you're gonna spend yeah. forever. Aero, it, like, Aerosmith's um, the don't want to close my eyes. Don't, don't, don't want to miss, miss, miss a miss thing. Me. Yeah, that's her. That's the Aerosmith's only this number one. Is it really? Yep. Um, I, dude, that that should not surprise you. Actually, Ryan, here's the only dude. number one. Yeah. All right. Do you know that? Do you know Jimmy Buffett's uh, very first number one? Margarita? Cheeseburger in Paris. No. Margaritaville. No. Five o'clock somewhere with Alan Jackson. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. He didn't have a number one. No, but he had a great following. Yeah. Yes, he did. Blame it on the rain by Millie Vanilli. <laughs> Can't fight the moonlight, Leanne Rhymes. Oh, I love that one, too. Oh, my goodness. There's so many. I'm just, like, skipping He's through. He's going alphabetically, yeah, by the way. Hard. He's at the C's. Just trying to it's, go to... to like, just type in biggest... Biggest, biggest Diane Warren. Diane Warren hits. That's the easiest way to do it because if you go by song, just the sheer yeah, number it's, of it's cuts like she has. Fifty is years of U.S. top ten hits by Diane Warren. Let's go that route. Yeah, do that. No, nope, that. that didn't do it. That's Gosh dang it! <laughs> <laughs> ten best, twenty best. Here we go. There we go. That, now you got Ryan's list going. <sighs> Rhythm of the night. Don't turn around. What, what, by this Tina list Turner. is brought to you by who? Who is this list brought to you by? Do uh, right, Entertainment Weekly, EW. Oh, perfect. Nothing's going to stop us now by Starship. Oh, God, what a song. What a song. 
If I could turn back time by share. Love will lead you back by Taylor Dane. If you ask me to by Patty LaBelle. Unbreak my heart by Tony Braxton because you love me by Celine Dion. How do I live by Leanne Rhymes? Have you ever by Brandy? Don't want to miss a thing. And then uh, 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 ads popped up. Gosh dang it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish that you guys could see exactly what I'm seeing. Like Josh trying to scroll through this. This is awful. <laughs> anyway, she's awesome. That's, yeah. that's exciting. Yeah, she's amazing. So I'm looking forward <coughs> to that. That or she's going to look at me and be like, no, redneck. <laughs> I've changed my mind. I think... <laughs> I think she probably, I would love to, you know what I would love to see her and Ashley Gorley just in a room. Oh God. I would <laughs> don't just, look, do not invoke <laughs> his name. He's just going to appear. Is he like Beetleju- Ashley Gorley, yeah, Ashley Gorley, say, no, Ashley no, no, Gorley. No, 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 don't do it. Yeah, look around. Yeah. <laughs> he, uh, he is one of my favorite people though. I love that guy. Um, all right. So we're going to do, what are you listening to? Uh, and I know that I've already said this song in the past but just on principle because it is number one this week dirt cheap cody johnson gotta be there heck yeah uh, i've been digging into the post malone record uh wrong ones featuring tim mcgraw lead off track on the record is fantastic rye i got a chance to go to the mike stud show here in st pete's um a couple days ago um pretty cool mike stud an independent artist um, kind of in the hip hop realm, pretty well known around Nashville, Scottsdale area too, and up north. Um, it was his largest show to date. Ten thousand people showed up, which is pretty darn cool. I love when when we can nice. set records going to shows and supporting artists. So really cool for Mike. He was jacked up and excited. Um, so was the crowd there. Ten thousand plus to see Mike. So like blood is the song by Mike Stud, um, and he just goes by Mike period on Spotify. But it is like blood. Uh, I'm going to go with a newer song by Big Sean and it's uh, Who who You Are with Superstar and Princey. All right. Cool. We are uh, sort of all over the map on those, but I like it. They're explicit, not safe for work. Shocker. <laughs> it's a nice, Thanks for the warning, Bear. Nice, nice warning right there at the tail end. <laughs> You're, You're like, oh, by the way, don't listen to this for work. Um, okay, let's go to sports. Maddie literally just Maddie she had made that little appearance before she literally just randomly texts me she goes are are you up and I was like I'm recording the podcast she goes my song of the week fancy by Reva love you talk to you later (laughs) (laughs) how did she know we were doing all right there you go (laughs) good job Mads um ladies and gentlemen football Ryan hit me is back let's there go there it is let's go baby let's go baby oh very very excited um very happy to see my longhorns get the job done i i get it they're playing a, a tune-up game before they have to play michigan next week but it's still really nice to see now here's my question for you did you watch this game the texas game yes i only saw highlights Rai, did you watch it? I did. I got a chance to see Texas. Yeah. Okay. No, I I want to know your opinion because yours is still starting. And I thought Arch looked really good. Yours is the starting quarterback for that team. There's no, unless, barring an injury, I don't think that you're going to have a quarterback controversy. That you have a legitimate shot at winning a national title this year. I don't think Sark wants to rock the boat. This is yours as team, but to have a guy like Arch there, who's obviously going to be the future of you know that program, it's only beneficial to have that kind of competition between those two quarterbacks. Yours is your guy though, and and to, I think Texas' schedule is relatively easy this year for the record. Like I actually like. There's, okay. there's no doubt in my mind. All right, the wait. The relatively easy schedule of playing compared a to like a Florida. Team. Okay, wait. Whoa, 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 whoa! Don't bury the lead just because you haven't been here and think that we haven't been paying attention while you were gone. Florida has the most difficult schedule in all of college football. Period. Beat Michigan next week. Beat Michigan next week. Yeah, we check. have to beat Michigan, and then two weeks later we turn around and we play Georgia. 
and then and then Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah pretty tough I, schedule. I, how do you? How, in what world? In what universe do you think Texas has an easy schedule, Mister UCF? Finish out with A and M. Pretty tough schedule. Good job. It's gonna be good. Good run. Viewers, by the speaking, way, you're starting. Speaking quarter. of speaking of Florida, I want I want to say I wish that the toughest schedule in football is the excuse, but it's not because our team. I don't know what we fired. What's his face after one year, and we're giving Napier three years of looking like trash. Well, you don't remember what's his face's name because so. he was there for a year years ago. <laughs> he was there for a year years ago. I'm drawing a blank right now, but Mertz is not our guy. We look like you're talking about Jim McElwain. Uh, he was before Napier. Anyways, but like I was saying, Mertz is <laughs> wow. not our guy. Oh, Dan Mullen. Dan Mullen. Oh, thank Dan you, Mullen. Dan yes, Mullen. It was Jesus. Dan Mullen. Thank that you. That was like the most awkward pause we've ever had on this podcast. <laughs> I was like trying in my head, and I was like, that doesn't sound right. That- Spurrier. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Spurrier. That was it. <laughs> but anyways, Burtz, I don't think, is our guy. We we don't know how to play call. I feel like I'm watching the Bears bef- like if they were a college team. Because between our play calling, our defense got walked. It was just a pathetic game. And everyone... I've obviously all the Gators fans agree that that was a disaster. We had the longest winning home opening streak in SEC, and we just blew it. Do you know that was your first home opening loss for the Gators? Like 40 since years? Since I was born. Since I was Did born you in 1989. I, was I literally say, whoa, whoa, whoa. just said it's, that. It's longer than that, Ryan. It's like 40 years or something. We had they... the longest streak in SEC in home openers, and we just blew it. And it looked pathetic like i i i it was hard to watch I would, I would say more recently that is not as important of a like a, a stat because it used to be that all of the the home openers like game one were tune-up games right all of them were it, it was very very rare to see someone get upset opening week in college football because they were playing a tune-up game you know the App State win over was it Michigan? That was just like the the craziest upset. Like those those don't really happen anymore, right? Because now there's a lot more competitive games. In they've week got competitive week games, games than week one. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's more my point. Uh, case in point, Monsell. While you're filming this, any thoughts on LSU? <laughs> yeah, he's a Kentucky. I know fan. you're a Kentucky fan, but you're from <laughs> Louisiana. You didn't watch it? <laughs> Man, come on. He was editing. Brian Kelly. He was editing Brian with Kelly his nuts. Kentucky hat on, or Kentucky helmet on, he, watching. He's got to go, man. I, I, him getting mad and, <laughs> like, I, I like the energy, right? I, I like to have a head coach go, I guess I'm not coaching these guys good enough. But there does come a point where you look at his record against good teams in the last two jobs he's been in and you start to go maybe you're right <laughs> maybe maybe you aren't coaching the very well I'm sorry I, I don't mean to like come across as, as flippant I know that's a very hard job but man you can't go out there and do that if you're the head coach at LSU um, I have He's a- lost three consecutive uh, opening games, I believe, uh, to start his LSU mm-hmm. career, both to FSU and now this one to USC. Which yeah. USC is a good team, by the way. Like I, I, LSU, by by no means, is out of the college football playoff. Oh, no, 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 no. And and by the way, they're ranked. It's not like he he lost to an unranked team week one. So I, Florida State. But I do have a question. And I was talking about this the other day. So especially if you are in the SEC. Would you lose the first game? It already feels like your season's over. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so, what's the point of watching the way that they, you know, judge to get into the playoffs and how it all works? It's like if you have a loss, you're done. Unless what's you're Alabama. I, well, yeah. I, I, Unless no, you're Alabama. No. Because you'll get in regardless no, no, no. if you're Alabama. Yes. No. No. I I think that has shifted dramatically with the addition of a a twelve team playoff. 
uh, I I think you're going to see a two loss SEC team get in. You three think loss. three? I think it, I, I think this year because of how challenging the SEC. I, I think a three loss SEC team is going to sneak into the 12th spot. I do. I, I actually do. Think with three. If 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 you're talking about losing to the likes of a Georgia, a Texas, and Ole Miss, yeah, I think I think if you run through the rest of your schedule and those are close losses, I can see them doing that over a Big Twelve team or a Big Ten team that's on the on the, well, on the fringes. I think then, it's, it leaves the door open for them. I I hear what you're saying, but here's the problem: if they do that, then everyone is going to be up in arms over the fact that there's still undefeated teams not getting in from smaller conferences. For example, 2017, where a Florida team (laughs) went undefeated despite playing no ranked teams until the very last week, which went double overtime and is a BS of a undefeated season. National champs say, say no, 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 Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl champs. That's it. But again, but that's what I'm saying. Like for example, Florida, we, it was a dog walk of a game by Miami for us. Like I would feel like they're they're going to look at that game and be like, if they go win the rest of the season, we won't. But if they go win the rest of the season, <laughs> they won't. <laughs> they they're going to look at that game and be like, Ugh, sorry, we're just not going to let them in because of that game. Like it's just, you guys know. No, how I, I don't think so. Is. I think it's the opposite. I think it's the opposite there because I think Florida's schedule is so tough this year. If Florida was the team with three losses, oh, I don't. know. And you talk about Miami, or you lose to, I. I, th- I if, if Florida were to only have three losses this year and their three losses are with this year given schedule, they make it in. I, I think there's no doubt. And then, like, even, like, FSU with their downfall at the start. But that at least that game was a little closer than the Florida game. Who impressed you most this week? Was there any t- team specifically that impressed you guys most? I, look, I, I'll um, give it to them. Georgia Tech. Thank you. That's what I was going to say, Georgia Tech. They did not look like the team that we are used to seeing from an offensive or a defensive standpoint. They're two and zero, by the way, now because I think they just won their second game too. So not only did it be Florida State, they're, I think they're two and zero to start. I mean, put them in the put them in the championship. Let's go. God, okay, that two might be, good wins. That might be a little soon. Isn't this overreaction weekend? Yeah, like this right. is we're a game or two games in for everyone. That's you want overreaction. Yeah, give us overreaction. UT Martin. Overreaction oh, Monday. Oh, no. Let's go. <laughs> the Miami Hurricanes are winning. The Miami Hurricanes are winning the national championship this year. Oh, overreaction Monday. Very overreaction. They, okay. they. I mean, did they look good or is it just because they played Florida? Just, <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. The answer is yes. I, Ryan, even Miami fans would say you're nuts for what you just said. Probably yes. Yeah, yeah, probably yeah. I'd say not so. probably definitely that you're. But it's overreaction Monday. It's overreaction Monday. Okay. Um, do we think in professional NFL football mm. we get a three peat this year? Yes. I know you're going to say that as a snap call just because it's your team. It's not. I just, want an honest opinion. It's not just because they're they're my team. Um, I think this is the last season for Travis Kelsey. So they got to do it. I think that. You mean like on the team or retiring? I think retiring. Yeah. He, I think. Yeah, he, he won't play for another team. He'll retire as a. As I think a that uh, we didn't. While we lost Legereus Sneed, we picked up. Jaden Hicks as a safety. We have some some. Our, we're basically running back a top five defense from last year. Our offense is better. We have better wide receivers. We cut Kadarius Tony. You definitely he had hands of stone. Tony, he's yeah, gone. He's gone. Um, we brought back Juju Smith Schuster. I don't know how healthy he's going to be, but he at least knows the playbook. Um, all signs and symptoms point to at least an AFC Championship game, and I'd be curious who you think would be in that championship game against the Chiefs. Either Baltimore or Buffalo, but how tough is, is Kansas City's schedule this year? Not very. I I think Buffalo takes a step forward this year. Takes a step forward? You they lost so? a lot of playmakers defensively and offensively, too. I know, but I really and truly do believe they... As much as from the other end of the spectrum, you look at the Chiefs 
going, this is sort of like the last hurrah for that team. Um, I think Buffalo feels it's in the same position for a different reason because Josh Allen is not going to be able to run the way he does for his entire career. He's not going to have the cannon for an arm for his entire career. Those things degrade with age and time, right? He's been there for a while now, and they have not been able to break through that glass ceiling, sort of like so to speak. Mm-hmm. I, I think they play with their, to use another sports euphemism, with their hair on fire this year, and I think he they end up against the... the Chiefs. I don't think they beat the Chiefs. No, I don't. I don't think so either. They were eleven and but six. But the last AFC's year. better. The AFC's better this year. You've got, you've got Cincinnati with you know. Yeah, the Jets are going to be better. Like, I think the Chargers could compete. Are if, if we're Aaron, it, we don't know the, what Aaron Rodgers is going to do. The, literally, we, we not literally a have no clue. It, the, the Jets are a question mark. If Aaron Rodgers the NFL plays passing the NFL leader in Tua Tagovailoa and the upstart Miami Dolphins oh, under Mike McDaniel okay, going to win their first playoff game in 20 upstart, upstart the Miami upstart. Dolphins who laid, and what, 60 on somebody last year? Passing yards leader, but guess what? Josh Allen has the most touchdowns and leads and interceptions. It, it can go either way. Uh, you also, but hold up, hold up, hold up. Run it back for a second. What was the team you said before the Jets? The Bengals, I believe. The Bengals, yeah. The one with, with Joe Burrow. Joe back. Burrow with that broken wrist that he can't throw for more than two days mm-hmm. in a row. That mm-hmm. Joe Burrow? That one? Baltimore? How about Baltimore? You can throw Baltimore. Uh, I, think, I think they're going to have an issue in Baltimore uh, trying to balance Derrick Henry's running style with Lamar Jackson. The, Lamar's a runner. <laughs> the advantage that you had with Lamar Jackson, think of it just from a fantasy standpoint. The advantage of having Lamar Jackson on your team is you can throw out another tight end who can block, mm-hmm. and you have a quarterback that can throw or can take off at any moment. If you put Derrick Henry in there, you're you're basically saying Lamar Jackson is not going to throw on this down. Derrick Henry is not the blocker. So you're going to load up the box. You're going to become very predictable. Whereas before... The unpredictability of the Ravens, not knowing if he's going to run or throw, is kind of out the window. Is out the window. So, who is the other team in the AFC that we were talking about? I well, I think it's the Texans are most likely to take the jump. They have reloaded on offense and defense. D'Amico Ryan's is a good the, coach. I think the Texans are going to do very well. I like I like that pick. I think it's, I hate to like that pick because Parker McCollum. Uh, and I always have a bet every year <laughs> about who's going to win more games, the Cowboys or the Texans. I think the Cowboys could still win more I, games in the regular season. Uh, it's just, a, ma- it's it's just a matter, a matter of, of what we happens don't know. after that. We don't know because obviously we can't even get Dak Prescott signed to a contract. And it's funny how many people forget how good he is because I, I will talk to other Dallas Cowboys fans that will look me in the face and be like, well, it's probably, you know, we got CD, so we should probably just get a new quarterback. And I'm like, from where? Is there a store? Everyone's on a struggle bus with to? quarterbacks right now. There, yeah, but pay him now because the the number's only going to go up. Number's going to go up. That's That was the point of locking down Patrick Mahomes to $50 million a year for 10 years. Yes. It's $50 million now looks like a bargain. Yeah. Yes. When you're paying Kirk Cousins. 66 million or whatever it is first of all i won't i want kirk cousins or his agent whoever finessed his career to make my financial decisions for me (laughs) because as much as i think i know a a lot about a little or a little about a lot dude was getting the bag that guy has secured (laughs) the bag repeatedly and has not provided the skill set for that he's a fine quarterback he's fine but holy crap it's a it's a he he has been just good enough and in the right situation every single time because if you remember he kept getting franchise tag when he was was in washington and kept making like 24 million 27 million 30 million you're like wait why are we why are we paying him this (laughs) wait a second (laughs) But I, I'll, I, think, I think we've been bamboozled. I think the NFL as a whole has gotten better this season. I think the AFC as a whole has gotten better this season. But I still think all roads go through Arrowhead. So It'll be interesting to see. It's going to be a really, really good season. Do we think there is going to be a breakout rookie? And if there is, who do you think it will be? 
you think is going to be Caleb? No. No. Nope. No, it will not. Nope. And I love how ESPN or Sports Center, one of them posted that they predict Caleb as the rookie well, of the I year. T- I told you I thought it was Bo Nix. Interesting. Uh, I'm just saying, like, look. Do you, you want the odds? Uh, no. Do you want yet, the odds for yet. rookie of the year? Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, are you going to go Marvin Harrison Jr.? He's in a good situation. Um, and he would be a clear wide receiver one for Kyler. And Kyler mm-hmm. looked pretty good at the end of last season. So mm-hmm. if they build on that. What about you, Ryan? What do you think? If I had to pick one, it's Jaden Daniels. I think from Washington. Oh, okay. I, I Jane, like that. Jane, I think Jane and da- I think Jane Daniels is going to surprise. I, I actually am not really more a fan of, of now, as we've seen more often than not rookie quarterback starting right out of the gate, but I really like Jaden Daniels' skill set, and I think he's going to do a really good job with that commander's offense. So, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets that gets that one. That's, that's actually why I'm picking Bo Nix, because he's in a perfect position to start as a rookie quarterback because of his age and his experience. I don't think he's going to have the same sort of issues and hurdles that come with being a starting rookie QB because he feels like, hey, my time's already sort of been shortened because of my age. And he's also got not only the experience, but probably more mental fortitude than you would expect from from a rookie. Yeah, more game, more games played. Yeah. And so, therefore, there's a Do you trust level. Sean Payton, though? you trust Sean Payton in that position? I do in this particular case because I think he is the sort of quarterback that Sean Payton likes working with stylistically. They're very different from a Drew Brees, for the record. The, yes. But I think he would rather have him than what he's worked with in the past. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you what do you <laughs> what mean? What do you what do you mean? <laughs> okay. Um Do we want to touch MLB at all? I mean, we're sort of in that in-between area of the season. No, I think we can skip it. We're good. Yeah, we're back to football. Ryan, how are the Rays doing? Where? What are the Rays at? Well, that right there. I just, I I, I just want you to. Hey, yeah, I just want you to be able to see this this ring, Ryan. There's there's Tropicana Field right behind you, the the home of your Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, Where, by the way, the Rangers playoff was started last year in that building behind us. Yeah, because actually, if you take the top off this ring, right here on the inside, it says Road R O A D for the teams that they beat in order. Yeah, it starts. With- By the way, we're gonna we're gonna take a quick pit stop for live TV, and then I'll be back to join you guys. Uh, right. No baseball talk. You guys can talk baseball while I'm gone. We're gonna talk we'll about go. movies. Yeah, while we'll you're talk gone. about Rays fourth in the AL East. Yeah, we'll be back. We'll be sixty-seven we'll be back. and sixty-nine. <laughs> All right, buddy. Bye. 11 and a half games back. 11 and a half. Yeah. So it's, it's funny how he never says that. He always yeah. tries to find the way around. He's like, oh, they're, they're the same number of games back. No, they're not. Um, all right. Let's go to movies. Movies. You didn't watch this movie, did you? The whole reason so we did right, this was that you, you so could watch right it. So right as we started so the podcast, I just realized that I forgot. <laughs> To watch the movie. Rounders, 1998. Uh, Interesting, because it says crime slash thriller. (laughs) Not how I would describe that movie. Not at all how I would describe this movie. Um, Mike McDermott, Matt Damon, loses his money in a poker game against Russian gangster Teddy KGB, John Malkovich. Under pressure from his girlfriend, Joe, he promises to quit gambling. This lasts until his friend, Lester Murphy... Edward Norton, great cast in this movie. Worm. Worm. Gets out of prison and needs to pay off an old debt. The pair come close to earning the money back, but are caught cheating. Then Mike finds out the debt is owed to Teddy and makes one last-ditch effort to beat the Russian. Matt Damon, Edward Norton, John Malkovich, Gretchen Maul, uh, John Turturro, who I love. He's Joey Kanish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, like just an insane, insane cast. Great movie. I I would absolutely not describe this as a crime movie. I understand that <laughs> he's the Russian and it's sure. like shady dealings and stuff, but 
uh, th- this is definitely like a poker movie. Like it, that that is almost like describing Maverick as a western. <laughs> like it's not. It's it's a poker God, I movie. I love that movie. It's a poker movie. Can we watch that movie next? Yes. Absolutely. No, Absolutely. No, 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 no. Yeah. Which movie? Maverick. Maverick. No. Why? Cuz guess what comes out? What comes out this week? Beetlejuice. Yeah, I'd rather oh, watch Maverick. Oh man. Much much rather <sighs> watch Absolutely Maverick. Absolutely not. No, nah, I I want to watch Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Yeah. Well, it's technically Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Yeah, Beetlejuice. it's the second one. So there's going to be a third one. Oh, there has to be. You have there, to Yeah, finish. you got to go three if you're going to go if two. You, if you're going to go two, you have to finish yeah, the... The trilogy. The, okay. Especially if it does well. If it doesn't do well, then maybe not. I was going to... Okay. I was going to... I was going to... I was going to say... Ra- rounders. Where does, where does Rounders rank for you in like casino and betting movies? You know what I mean? So like if, if, oh, if you put Oceans in there... 21 oh, rounders man. <sighs> trying to think of other casino movies uh <laughs> casino casino <laughs> is is a, is a movie yes that is a movie that exists casino royale mm-hmm. so bond i guess that technically sort of works um i don't know i it would be top five for me um if for no other reason than just that scene of Swingers leaving Las Vegas. Malkovich. Hangover. It's Malkovich, right? Yeah. Not Malkovic. Malkovich. Malkovich. Uh it, it, just the the scene of him going He beat me. Play that man his money. Mm-hmm. Like just the terrible, like over the top accent. Yeah. Like I think he even said at one point, he was like, I probably went in too hard with <laughs> the accent. <laughs> um but he's like, oh, my check, but, check, check. But if you're going to be called the Russian, I feel like yeah, you really you have, have to, to sell it. You have to go deep. Yeah. Yeah. I loved it. I I, I just think this movie is, is top five for me. If if you're talking about just movies about casinos or gambling or anything. It's, it's got to be. It's got to be. I would put Maverick up there, too, though. I would, too. It didn't even make the top 20 list. that it, 25 that I found. Because I typed in casino. Uh, so just I, go I, through puberty? I, I typed in casino film, so I'm sure it's calling it something. I'm sure they're calling it a Western. But Maverick is... A Maverick uh, is not a Western. That's like saying Tin Cup is a sports movie. <laughs> it is. It is. But it's not. Well, it's really more of a love story. Right. Yeah. Anyway, I love... Yeah. No, it's at number two. Number All two. Right. Casino. The cooler is at number one. Swingers at number seven. If you've never seen that one, that's I've great never too. seen any of the movies you're oh, talking about. Oh my god! All right, you really need to watch this movie again. Not really a casino movie, but they do go to a casino, so I don't know if that yeah. counts. <laughs> I, yeah. Same thing as the Hangover. Whatever. Whatever. Hangover is in a casino, but not it, a but casino not a movie. casino movie. Yeah. Oh wait, they have the Hangover as a casino. No, movie? no, no, no. He's saying they, they do. They do. Wait, they do. <laughs> number eleven. What? This is what? on IMDb's top 25 casino I, films. IMDb, I love you, but I don't know if I trust you after seeing this list. <laughs> right? Yep. Ocean's 11, 12, and 13 are well, numbers that, 16, that 17, sense. and 18. They should have just put it at 12, 13. Yeah, 11, 12, I, that 13. would have been funny. Yeah. It would have been a little inside. Is, is Nicolas Cage's Viva Las Vegas on there? It is. <laughs> it is number, you mean leaving Las Vegas? I, thought, yes. it, I yep. thought it was called Viva Las Vegas. No, it's called Leaving Las Vegas. Leaving. Yeah, number six. Anyway, so Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice yeah. next week. Yes! Yeah. I actually am excited for this because they did bring back the original cast. Oh, so. this is kind of funny. Ryan's still on the Zoom. Yeah, while well, he's doing his live <laughs> we shot. Get to watch. It, yeah, if anybody sees this, they're going to be very Should we confused. narrate our own, our own <laughs> thing while he's... What is he doing? I wonder if he can still hear us because if he no. can, I'm just going to start messing with him while he's in uh, mid stream of consciousness. No Ryan, 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 he anyone, <laughs> anyone but Ryan. Hey, yeah. Well. Succulent chunks. Succulent, yeah, succulent chunks. Succulent chunks. I was going to start saying way worse words than I realized we're still t- <laughs> filming. Yeah, our we, we actually are still doing the podcast, Josh. Yep. Not bad. My bad. I must okay. let that loose. All right. The well, juice is loose. The juice is loose. Let's go to the hot take. Ryan's going to be very confused when he joins back in. If he makes it in time. Yeah. 
because this will only take a second. One of the most annoying things in the world to me. Mm, I'm with you. I don't even know what it is, but I think I do. Is when someone puts yep. a toilet paper roll where it doesn't go over and you just pull it off the top. Mm. But they put it upside down. Under. And under. That is wrong. You're a demon. And I might hate you. <laughs> okay. All right. It is supposed to be you put the roll on where the flap of toilet paper hangs over the top towards you and you pull it out and then rip off how many squares you need. That's it. Over, not under. And the the third choice would just be the roll that's sitting there on top of the toilet where it's just... No, no, no. no, no we're no, not doing that. No, 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 unattached to anyone, just no, living third, its life. The third choice is my choice, and I don't you, care. You're going to say wet wipes? No, I'm going to say I'm indifferent. <laughs> indifferent? I no, don't care. I just... But when you I replace, have a way that you put toilet paper on the roll every time. I... Just grab the toilet paper. Every roll. human on the planet you have knows I'm right. You have a preference. I don't. I literally don't. I grab the toilet paper roll and put it on. Right, well I don't I'm, look at I'm which picking, way it is. I'm, I'm just going to say that means she's under. Yeah, so she's under. No, you can't decide for me because I don't I, care. You have Sometimes to pick it one. ends up over. No, you do it, not. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you don't, here's this, this is real. I'm not trying to like pick a fight. There if are you people, don't care, if you don't then care, you're an if, under. You, then you're an under because if you're an over, you are firmly an over person it's never like oh whatever P there are there are over people and then there are under slash un unaffected people that's I'm unaffected. it i literally so you're just, under okay. i'm going to make a third one that says unaffected no there's, there's I'm two not, options i'm not going to say i'm under when i don't care it could go either Josh, way do you have an opinion of course i have an opinion on this also it should be noted from the u.s patent office number patent number Four thousand five hundred oh, four five nine five one six. The actual way to patent the toilet paper roll is over. Thank you. That is the correct way to wait, do wait, it. Wait, wait, wait. Are we going over and under here? Is yes. that yes. Just, yes? Do you have a do you have a just preference? Going discussion? Over. It's always over. There's never an under with toilet paper. Exactly. Ever. If you're doing it under, you're doing it wrong. And by the way, if I walk into someone's house and they have an under toilet paper, I immediately fix it because it's a, it's a huge you're, pet peeve. You're, a, a, you're a monster. No, it is not a guy thing. It's like, I just don't care. That, that in and of itself scares the crap out of me. And you know what? <laughs> For me, Literally. if Literally. it's the men... If it is the men that are worried about which way it goes, then replace the toilet paper roll. Don't leave it empty. I replace mine all the time. I can name a couple of men that do not replace it. Ryan. <laughs> Got him. Whoa, 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 whoa. Got well, him. I always replace my toilet Got paper. Got him. You sicko. So what is the question? Because I now that I can, right, now that so I can here, post it on the poll, the, what is the question? The, you already answered it. And so basically, the, the two things that are going to go on the poll are. There's three. There's three choices. No, there's not three choices. There's two choices. And it is. Always number two. It's, <laughs> yes. Speaking of number two, uh, do you put the toilet paper where it's over or under when you put the new roll on. This is also the opportunity for you to play everybody get your roll on in the background if you wanted to. Or this is how we <laughs> roll by Florida Georgia Line. <laughs> I got a funny story about that I got to tell you if I haven't before. Um, anyway, over or under on your toilet paper roll. That is the hot take for Bet this the week. Over. Bet the over. As always, thank you guys for listening to The Quad with Chris Young. I'm Chris from myself, Ryan, Josh, Haley, and Monsell back there, man of the cameras. We love you guys. See you next week. And we're out!